Uh, right, uh, let's deal with something uh, rather more important, uh, Matt Hancock. Now, uh, the, the CCTV the footage that exposed his extramarital affair with Gina Lola Brigida, his mistress or whatever her name is, uh, that is now the subject of a sort of uh, probe, a kind of official probe. They're trying to find who leaked that footage to the sun. Uh, that they think is the important thing. Who is the leaker? And then will they face, but they should face prosecution for this breach of security. Well, here's the thing. Uh, that was far less of a crime than the then health secretary, Matt Hel Hancock, committed uh, when he was in the middle of the health department in his office, breaking COVID rules, playing tonsil tennis with his mistress. I mean, you know, that is a far worse crime than leaking that footage, because whoever leaked that footage, uh, if they end up in court, they're going to have a very good whistleblower defence because the public had a right to know that the man who had imposed all these rules and regulations and laws on a long suffering British public was breaking those rules, regulations and laws himself. That is a story of public interest and therefore that is a whistleblower defence cut and dried. Uh, if they're going to prosecute that person, then for God's sake, you've got to prosecute the health secretary. Uh, let's talk to the founder of Young Voices UK, Jason Reid. Uh, good evening, Jason. Good evening, Kevin. Thanks for having me on. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, you got the, the gist of my view. Uh, would you agree? I'm completely in agreement. Yes, I think... What it comes down to is if this isn't in the public interest, then nothing is. You know, the, the instinctive reaction of um, Matt Hancock's advisors and aides was to make out that it was some grand expose, some grand plot to um, undermine him. They thought it was the Chinese Communist Party because, of course, Matt Hancock is so famed for standing up to Beijing that they would have been desperate to get rid of him. Um, <laughs> it, you know, the Sun was absolutely right to report this. And I think that the security guard, whoever, whoever it was who leaked this footage, was absolutely right to do so. It's clearly in the public interest. When you've spent so many months seeing harrowing footage of um, you know, kids vis visiting their elderly grandparents or great grandparents at care homes and they can only see them through a window, they're not allowed to hug them. And people using suspended plastic sheeting in order to hug their relatives, that kind of thing. People having to shield for months on end. And then Matt Hancock having a great deal of fun in his office it, it yeah yeah i mean it, it, we, we we the public definitely had a right to know that uh it was a public interest story and as i say whoever did leak that uh material that footage we don't know if it's a security guard could have been anyone we don't know who it was uh was performing a public service that is going to be a cut and dried whistleblower defense trust me and meanwhile the police and the government say no prosecution for the health secretary who broke his own rules uh that's double standards right there uh he committed a far worse crime than the person who leaked that cctv footage i still think he should face prosecution don't you i think there's certainly a very strong case for it i i think the statement that the met police put out about this was very very concerning when they said something along the lines of um we don't retrospective yeah as if it, that's exactly yeah. all criminal investigations are by their very nature retrospective obviously Exactly. That's, that's a terrifying precedent, doesn't it? Everything's legal now because the Met Police don't investigate things that happened in the past. It's <laughs> horrifying. So you can't get, quite get my head around it. Uh, moving on to Matt's many woes. And by the way, you know, I'm not trying to kick a man when they're down. Uh, the reason I say he should be prosecuted is because of so many other people, ordinary people around the country were prosecuted for breaking the rules. So why shouldn't the health secretary be prosecuted for breaking his own rules? Why should he have a special exemption when ordinary people were prosecuted that's just not right but moving on though uh, among his many woes it seems that uh, uh, his constituency officials are moving to deselect him they don't want him as their MP in West Suffolk anymore uh, this man is in a world of trouble self-created yes he absolutely is um He's, he couldn't be in a, in a worse position, and it's, it's completely of his own making. You can very much understand the sentiment of those constituency officials who don't want someone like Matt Hancock representing them. This wasn't an ordinary resignation. This wasn't that he had some disagreement with government policy or it was on a point of principle or anything like that. It was because his personal conduct was completely unacceptable. 
Yes, it certainly was. Uh, as I say, uh, breaking his own rules. And I think up in West Suffolk, most of us, uh, most people, you know, the, the affair is unfortunate and very sad uh, for his wife and kids. I feel so sorry for them. And indeed, Gina's husband and their children. Uh, but that, that's all a personal affair. That's uh, not really any of our business. It's uh, just, uh, you know, kind of around the edges of what the real scandal is. It is a health secretary breaking his own rules. And also, uh, questions have to be asked about him hiring his mistress uh, you know they say that it wasn't a love affair when he hired her but it certainly seems very uh, convenient that for 15 grand a year for about one day a month she got to travel around the country for him particularly to a G7 health summit in Oxford uh, always at his side it seems very convenient so there are other questions to be asked uh, but I think in the shires I don't want to be patronizing about people in the country but I think they may take a, a dim view uh, of his morality when it came to his family uh, and that I think may, might well be a factor in why the people of West Suffolk do not want this man to be their MP anymore. It's a, it's a question of hypocrisy isn't it what gets to me is the audacity he had to go day after day and stand behind that pulpit in Downing Street and tell us about the rules and what we could and couldn't do and then go and do TV interviews and say, oh, you're only allowed to have sex with people you're in an established relationship with. And meanwhile, he knew that he was doing all this back in his office at the expense of his own family with someone he definitely didn't live with. Mm. Um, so yeah, this is there's a very, very strong public interest for this, uh, this footage being out there. And it's hard to see how Hancock could have carried on as a minister with any shred of credibility it's hard to see how he could carry on as an mp with any shred of credibility to be honest yeah i agree uh, there are stories uh, going around today that uh, he's plotting his political comeback uh, it's like uh, good luck with that matt uh, useful phrases possibly in your future career would you like fries with that uh jason thank you so much for your time that was great well let's talk again very soon jason reed founder of young voices uk there i'm kevin o'sullivan and this is talk radio